What's going on? Running out of money, Harry has to use a credit card to buy an Ikea couch. Hello, friends. Welcome to Breaking Royal News about the notorious hypocritical couple, Harry and Meghan Markle, on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. Supposedly, when they got together, Harry had millions in the bank and Meghan had millions too. But for some reason, they had to put an Ikea sofa on a credit card. Harry claimed that they bought a second-hand sofa using Meghan's credit card. I would assume that Harry would be so well-known in the UK that he could have just waltzed into any store and gotten some things for their home and then repaid it to the firm. But the royal family, of course, is strongly discouraged from taking freebies or gifts in kind in case there is any situation where favors could possibly be called in. Any gifts they receive do belong to the state. And this would be very true if at that time he had retained his HRH status. They can give small little items to people, and that is what's caused so much upset with the butler. Now, obviously, this is not perfect, and some people have abused this situation. But there are not these free gift bags and promos, as some people may believe, come with the position. But anyway, Harry and Meghan's story doesn't make a bit of sense. So if it really were secondhand, how could they have used a credit card to buy it unless they went to some large charity shop that does furniture? And if they bought it directly from the company like Harry claimed, then uh, last time I checked, it would be new. It's very unclear where this particular piece of IKEA furniture was bought, but in the UK, it would be normal to pay for furniture, even a second hand, with a debit or credit card, even for people lucky enough to have a trust fund. Surely Harry had a bank account when he was in the army. In the UK, and in the US too, actually, checks are becoming increasingly rare, and cash purchases are typically treated as unwelcome. I mean, the burden of paying the money into the bank falls onto the shop, or people are suspicious of cash payments. If the purpose of the question is to imply that an IKEA purchase demonstrates that Harry and Meghan are cheapskates, then of course they might have already been planning to do a run to the US without too many encumbrances. Most people do need to use a credit card to pay for some big items, especially if they buy these items online. I mean, who is walking around these days with lots of cash on hand? William and Catherine have already been married for over a decade, and they also entertain heads of state like they did the Obamas. So, of course, they require a larger home for that, and they also have their offices. Multimillionaires like Meghan and Harry could afford to buy anything they want. Maybe it was just that they didn't want to have to spend their own money. They expected the royal family to foot the bill for their furnishings. And it's not really a California mentality at all. It is an entitlement mentality that Meghan and Harry have. Meghan probably also didn't believe that she had to touch her own nest egg to pay for a thing. After all, she married a prince, and so she expected him and his family to pay everything. Meghan certainly wanted to keep Harry far away from anybody who might convince him that she is a poisonous, manipulative snake. She successfully alienated him from everybody, his family, his friends, just like she planned. Meghan does not love Harry, let's get real. Instead, she just loves all the benefits of wealth and celebrity that come along with being married to Harry. But the sad thing for Meghan is she ruined it with her laziness, her greed, and her entitlement. And in being stupid too, which it looks like both of them are guilty of. If he could feel shame, Harry should be absolutely ashamed of himself. This is just a classic case of lying by omission, and that's something that Harry loves to use over and over again. Nottingham Cottage is directly next to Kensington Palace, which is located in central London. Before William and Catherine moved into their big apartment in Kensington Palace, they did live in Notcod. And when they moved out of the cottage, Harry moved in. And then when Harry got together with Meghan, she moved in with Harry. But here is what Harry is intentionally not telling us. Before they got married, it had been agreed upon that Harry and Meghan would move into apartment one in Kensington Palace, which has 21 rooms. The Duke of Gloucester lived in the apartment, and he offered to move out just so that Harry and Meghan could have it. And the apartment is right next door to William and Catherine's apartment. Renovations were being carried out to the Kensington Palace apartment in hopes that work would be completed before Harry and Meghan's wedding. In the meantime, though, the relationship between the two couples absolutely broke down. Apparently, Harry and Meghan asked the late queen if they could move into Windsor Castle, which was the late queen's home. 
So Windsor Castle is located about an hour away from Kensington Palace by car. And apparently the late queen said absolutely not. They couldn't move into Windsor Castle. But she did offer them Frogmore Cottage, which is located within the grounds of Windsor Castle. So then they got started with the renovations to Frogmore Cottage. And what are the chances that the furniture they've got in Kensington Palace, which both Harry and Meghan were envious of, was actually in use at Anglesey or not caught? Most of the furniture in any of the palaces are antiques. I mean, they've probably been passed down for generations in the family. I would assume that they would furnish not caught for whoever was living there at the time. Various royal family members have lived in it over the years. Now, I saw some photos of the interior, and they were not really lavish, I've got to admit. In fact, it didn't even look as good as a Marriott Residence Inn, where I spent a lot of time while I had to travel for my job. The furniture in the Cambridge residence was for a permanent living space, and I'm guessing William and Catherine had to use their own money to pay for the furniture. At the time that Meghan and Harry were living in Notcott, Harry had already inherited millions, actually more even than his brother. There is simply no reason that he couldn't pay for decent furniture. Harry is already known to be a cheapskate, as mentioned by his prior girlfriends. One spectator weighed in, commenting, William Wales and his bride lived near me on Anglesey. Having moved from a flat into a house and being first married, he requested advice about furniture from Grandpa. Grandma came along too, and he insisted on showing her his workplace and helicopter. In a subsequent interview, the grandson said how astonished he was by his grandpa's knowledge and took his advice as he did not know where to start. Most newlyweds are similar. After about 11 years of marriage and three children and two house moves, the younger brother comes to visit and envies the furnishings. Now younger brother had the advantage of the same grandpa, but instead expressed envy at the surroundings. It takes most families years to assemble a child-friendly home of some comfort. Any idea that it can arrive overnight is very Californian. The shopping and designing that William and Catherine did while their home was being renovated were very well documented. They paid for most of their own things. They were also allowed to select artwork, some furniture, lamps, etc. from the royal collection of the royal family. Their residence is the home of two future kings. It should be furnished nicely. The envy shown towards William and Catherine is unnerving. And I also remember reading that Meghan and Harry were given the same option. They were offered art from the royal collection. What do you think about Harry using his credit card to buy an Ikea sofa? Let us know your thoughts below in the comments section. We hope you have found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back to see you in the next videos. Bye-bye now.